Welcome to the Jobs and Work Podcast. If you're like most Americans, you spend a significant amount of your time working. In fact, we spend more time at our jobs than anywhere else. But how often do we really talk about work in America? On this podcast, the Work for Change team will. Work for Change LLC is a team of social scientists, thought leaders, and digital storytellers who dig into the critical issues affecting American workers and workplaces today. Our podcast is co-hosted by Dr. Kendra Jason and myself, Dr. Chris Maycumber. We'll also bring guests onto the show who reflect the diversity of the American workforce. We are so excited for you to join us as we lead the efforts to humanize the workplace by building dignity and equity into jobs, work, and organizations. Please subscribe to the podcast and share us with your friends and family. You can learn more about Work for Change at workforchangellc.com. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Jobs and Work podcast. We are really excited for our first episode. And I am Chris Maycumber, and I'm here with my co-host. Let you introduce yourself. I am Kendra Jason. This is my first podcast, and I am excited to start this venture. So a little bit about what we're doing, what we've been up to. Uh, Kendra and I have been really busy uh, working on our new business venture called Work for Change. In this first podcast, we're going to talk about what Work for Change is, why Work for Change, why Kendra wanted to found Work for Change, and then we're going to talk about what we will be discussing on the Jobs and Work podcast. Um, yes. So I'm going to hand it over to Kendra to talk about her vision for Work for Change and what we're going to be doing. So uh, Work for Change actually started in my brain probably about 20 years ago. Um, I've always been interested in work. Um, I really see the world through the lenses of work. Um, work is not just how much money we make um, and our access to healthcare, it's also how we feel about ourselves, how we contribute to society, how much time we have to spend with our families, how much leisure time that we have. Everything is really wrapped up into um, how we engage with work. And so I think it's really important that we make work the best experience possible, right? And so workers want to enjoy the work that they do. Managers really typically want their workers to enjoy their jobs, right? And so that's really why I founded uh, Work for Change. Um, of course, this is January 2021, and um, we really got the, uh, the idea rolling during um, the COVID epidemic of 2020. So we were um, at home, we were thrust out of our jobs. Um, many of us were thrust out of our jobs in, if it was unemployment or decreased hours. For Chris and I, we were fortunate enough to work um, where we just transitioned from a physical space into a virtual space. And so, um, you know, it was a lot, a lot of working from home and there was a lot of disconnect. Workers didn't really, didn't have the grounding that they had before and managers and workplaces and employer, employers didn't really know how to handle how work had changed. And so um, being a scholar of work myself, I've been studying work for nearly um, 20 years. Um, I saw that you know, I can help bridge the connection. And so that's, that's really why I started it. I've always had the passion to connect people to good jobs. Um, you know, um, if you tell me you're looking for a job or that you're unemployed, I, I am going to try to keep my ear to the ground to figure out how to, how to uh, set you up. And so that's really, that's really where um, the idea came from. Uh, COVID-19, um, gave me the opportunity to actually explore, you know, get some, um, some, some, some research and training behind how to start a business. And so uh, one of the things that I'm really excited about as far as what we offer um, is digital storytelling, um, telling the story um, of your business. And so we'll talk about our services um, um, in a few minutes, but I just wanted to give Chris the opportunity to talk a little bit about what she does with the digital storytelling. Thanks, Kendra. So a little bit about my background, too. As a, a sociologist, I've always been fascinated in human behavior, 
uh, society and the sort of interplay between society and self. So how are we shaped and impacted by our systems? And one of those systems is the economy and then certainly the workforce, right? And just to kind of tag along to what Kendra was saying, like the, the sort of centrality of work in our lives and the way that that starts so early, like you think about the way we talk to young children and one of the first things we ask them, right? What do you want to be when you grow up? Yep. <laughs> we don't mean, like we're not expecting them to say, and I think this is problematic, but we're not expecting them to say like happy and fulfilled. We expect them to say, like, to attach their identity to a job. So, you know, as we're like, because we make work such a central feature in our life, I think it's really important that we stop and think about how we do work. Like what do, cause I think how we do work tells us about who we are, tells us about what we value, how we treat workers, how we pay workers and all of those really um, important social and cultural factors. So I've always been fascinated by that feature of it. Like how we work, the impact of that, like Kendra said, how much time we get to spend with our families, the quality of our healthcare, Work connects to so many other aspects of our lives. So this is where the digital storytelling comes in, is how do we capture that? Right? How do we, we can do surveys and we can do interviews with people and we can do focus groups, but we live in a visual culture. I would say that we're increasingly visual and video-based and image-based culture, right? You can see that in social media, you can see that in lots of things. So I believe that data is everywhere. It's all around us. So you go into a workplace, and you see visually the way people interact, how it's structured, how the space is organized. Um, and that to me is a fascinating way to tell the story about work is through digital storytelling. So using photography and film to capture um, social interactions and to kind of be able to breathe life into the workplace, right? And instead of just reporting numbers, that's interesting. We, we need to know trends. We need to know data, what percentage has increased, right? Those kinds of things are important, but that's not as compelling as looking at the workers and talking to workers and being able to put together really the, the compelling, meaningful, meaningful work people do. Because what we do every day is meaningful. It is compelling. So to try to capture that visually, uh, so part of what I'm bringing to Work for Change is documentary style videos. Um, the one that I made for our organization, you can find on our website and also on our YouTube channel. It's just a two minute video, gives you an idea of the, the kind of work that we can do for your organization as well. So that's a little bit of background about me. Kendra and I certainly have a lot in common in terms of our interests as sociologists and publicly engaged scholars, and we are both really focused on issues of equity and justice. So that's sort of what brought us together in graduate school many moons ago. So yeah, and so we go way back. <laughs> yeah, we go <laughs> way back. Um, you know, and so <clears throat> inequality is in everything, right? And so um, power dynamics is in everything. And again, like I said, when I, I look at the world through the lens of work, I also understand how the world operates through these power dynamics and through um, relationships. And so as a sociologist of inequality, I have always been really interested in the workers, specifically low wage workers, right? Um, or our more vulnerable workers. So I've always had a particular research interest in low wage workers, black workers, um, working caregivers, um, um, entry level workers, frontline workers, um, workers with chronic conditions, because all of these workers are typically fully engaged in the workforce and they may deal with some more obstacle and barriers, but just like any more privileged person, they would like to have great work experiences as well. And a lot of times managers um, don't know how to deal with these types of workers best, right? Because, you know, we call it, it's, um, it's a, a phrase called the ideal worker. And so the ideal worker is just a worker who can come in and work their quote unquote nine to five, you know, they're, they're not 
uh, distracted by what happens at home. So there, you know, you don't have to worry about that worker having to call out because of their kids or have to call out because they're sick or, you know, any of those things that would distract them from being wholly focused on getting the job done for you as the employer. That's what we call the ideal worker. The ideal worker is a myth. <laughs> this person does not exist. Um, yeah, we can unpack that in another episode. Yeah, I think that could be a whole does, topic. Yeah. Right. This person does not exist. And that's why it's called the, you know, the ideal. It's just like any relationship you have. You know, you can really like someone, you can love someone, but you also have to be realistic and deal with their imperfections as well, you know, whatever takes them from being the ideal. And so one thing that I really want to do as, um, as a, a work scholar, or someone who wants to improve the conditions of work is help organizational leaders, help managers um, really understand how they can structure or re-envision or think about how they've organized work in a way that is fulfilling to all of their workers, uh, you know, no matter uh, what the status of that worker is. And the thing is, is if an employee, and we know this, if an employee or work, employee slash worker thinks that their manager or their company values them and believes in them, then that job satisfaction increase, productivity increase, loyalty and retention increases. And we're not living in a society of um, probably, well, I guess 30, 30 years ago now where you had one, one worker who started in a company and matriculated through that company into retirement. Now we have, you know, people jump jobs, you know, people have multiple jobs, people have competing jobs, um, people have different careers, they have encore careers. It's, it's a lot that goes on that's very different from that really, you know, tra traditional way that we think about, you know, um, entering the labor market, starting a job, and then staying in that one job until retirement, sure. right? And so that's another thing that um, you know, managers, workers, and workplaces really need to come to terms with that we have fully, almost fully moved away from that type of work structure, and we just want to help um, build, uh, bridge the gap. Well, and I think right now, too, because so much has shifted and is continuing to shift, like society is always in, in flux, or always, there's always ebbs and flows and cultural and social changes, but right now, you know, we're sort of in this, this moment where there's a lot of changes with the mm -hmm. economy. Can we Real quick, talk about the insurrection last week through the lenses of work. Like Kendra had said, her lens is work, right? And my lens is often social systems and people, right? Empower, you know, we have that in common. So the insurrection, we were watching on television uh, in horror. And we talked about this, you know, a few minutes ago, how that was a day of work for many people. They went to work that day, right? They went to the, the Capitol as either Congress people or other staff members, the security, um, the healthcare workers who treated the people who were injured. Um, so Kendra, did you want to say anything else about your lens of work through the insurrection? Yeah, I think that's really important. And so again, that's, that's where Chris and I, um, we're really unique in that, you know, first of all, looking at things sociologically from a sociological perspective, right? And so we don't think about things on an individual level necessarily. We think about things in a, it, we think about things in context, you know, we think about environments, we think about conditions that shape for certain things to occur, for certain outcomes to occur. And so, um, again, with the, the uh, insurrection um, of last week at the Capitol, you know, of course, the media and the conversation and social media really was talking about, you know, um, uh, political ideologies and race and, um, you know, different aspects that were sort of sensationalized and obvious. Whereas, you know, Chris and I looked at the same the same situation and thought about, you know, what that work day was like for people like the security guards or the Congress people or, you know, whoever's in those situations. And then even after, you know, of course, there were some, there were some media stories where, you know, the insurrectionists were, uh, 
were mostly white, um, mostly white men. And after, you know, everyone was um, either arrested or pushed out of the area, you had a bunch of low wage black workers who had to clean up the mess of the insurrection. And so, you know, there are some, some race dynamics and some power dynamics and some really interesting um, sociological dynamics that we, we, um, we examine as well. And so we, we really kind of step back and try to look at the big picture, again, framing everything within the lens of work and inequality so that we can really tackle the, the foundation of what could make experiences better and how we can alleviate um, these inequities that people experience on an everyday level. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Kendra. I think that was great. And, you know, it's also like, we will also go even wider. Like, so we're not going to take for granted the fact that we structure jobs in this way, but we will look at, say, okay, well, why do we structure jobs this way? Like we live in a capitalist society. What does that then engender? Well, it then means that, that we try to maximize profit, low wage workers, right? The fact that we still have a minimum wage is a part of that, right? That we take for granted that we have a minimum wage and that that is seen as a good business model. Yeah. So we will also go kind of macro on that. We do want to segue into some of our key services. So Kendra, tell us about Work for Change. What's this for about? Because there, you know, what's the number? We have work for the number four change hotel our listeners. Yeah. So our, our company is called Work, the number four change, Work for Change. So it's an LLC. Um, our website is Work for, again, the number four change, LLC.com. And it actually, uh, the four stands for two separate things. One, it stands for the services that we provide. And two, it stands for our approach. And so really quickly, uh, we have four services is, um, organizational development, which is really evaluation and assessment of organizational goals, um, really trying to understand your state affairs, help you, um, this is usually um, upper management, um, helping other organizations troubleshoot, um, having, you know, just making sure that their ideals um, and their goals match up with the way that they're doing work, right? The second one is communication, and we really want to help um, the communication flow within the company, right? And so um, just really want to ensure, again, that when upper management and managers, organizational leaders are talking to, communicating, emailing um, their employees, that everyone is on the same page and that you're not talking beyond or over or offensively to someone without even um, recognizing uh, what you're doing. So we look at it internally, and then we also can help organizations with their community, with their communication externally by helping them bridge that gap between themselves and the broader community. We can think about community reputation, how they can better engage with the community, how can they, they can better respond to the community with the community needs. That's all folded up in communication. The third service is digital storytelling. And um, Chris has already talked about this a little bit, but in, the, in essence, we really want to help you capture uh, your company's story and to um, display it and present it in a way that appeals to mass audiences. And so it's not a commercial, you know, like we're not doing commercials <laughs> mm -hmm. necessarily, but what we're doing is we're, we're introducing or reintroducing your company to, it can be internal um, or to the broader community, um, the story that you would like to tell, the image that you want to relay. And if I could just tag on to that, just jump in, and also in a way that is centered on workers, like telling the story of the people who make your business run. So coming in and telling that story about the people who get up every day, go to work, um, and I think that that's what we want to do is really give voice to the workers. And then finally, we offer workshops and training. Uh, this is uh, 
sort of what Chris and I love to do. We, we really focus on a workshop being about work. <laughs> so in our workshops and training, um, you know, it's not us lecturing, it's not a seminar, it's not a feel good session, it's really getting um getting in you know getting inside your organization talking to your workers talking to your managers and um uh customizing an experience where uh you can get what you need and so just some examples of some that we offer of course diversity equity and inclusion um communication across the organization valuing and accommodating older workers, um, starting your own business. So we have a range of um, workshops and training that we can offer um, you um, as far as that. The second four is our approach. And so we have four key principles. They're equity, dignity, communication, and transformation. Um, Chris and I, we are all about education. We have PhDs, right? <laughs> We're all about education education, and knowledge and increasing knowledge. But what we really want is to help your organization shift or change in a direction that's more meaningful, that's more equitable, um, and that's more fair. Essentially, that's more humanistic. And so one of the things that we really promote is that we have a um, person-centered approach we center humanity. Uh, we always work for the common good. And so organizations that have those same ideals are organizations that we, we partner with or organizations who don't understand really those ideals or how to execute those ideals. We can help those organizations as well. Um, so those are our four. We have four service areas and then we have four principles um, in our approach. And so now we want to end with really talking about our, um, our podcast um, and what you can look forward to um, week by week. Yeah, thanks, Kendra. So we have a um, lineup. We're going to be doing a podcast. You'll be um, able to access access it every Friday on YouTube. That is our, our, our YouTube channel is called Work, uh, sorry, Jobs and Work with Work for Change. And we have a weekly structure. So we will be starting off the first Friday of every month will be conversations with Kendra and Chris about relevant issues, timely issues that are impacting workers and workplaces, right? So one of the conversations we might have is how COVID brought to light the, the role of essential workers. Like suddenly people were like so grateful for people who work in grocery stores, right? It saw them in a whole new lens and a whole new light really made, I think COVID has made more visible labor that has been taken for granted. So first Friday of every uh, month will be conversations with Chris and Kendra about a variety of issues related to workers and workplaces. Second Friday will be small business uh, Friday, where we're going to be inviting guests onto the show to talk about their business. Uh, also, if you want to be featured on the show and be interviewed, you can email us at workforchangelc.com um, and you can say, hey, I'm starting my business or I have one or I'm thinking of starting one and I want to come on the show and we can talk uh, about what you want to do and how you want to do it. Third Friday is going to be um, conversations about something newsworthy like the insurrection, something that happened that week in our culture, in our society, that we will apply a work lens to. So that's going to be something to look forward to our work in the news segment. And then lastly, the fourth Friday of every month, we're going to be bringing on a special guest. It can be a scholar, an author, an activist, someone who is known for engaging with some of the issues that we talk about on jobs and work. So be looking forward to that. We really are excited to be sort of launching this podcast and I've had a fantastic time this morning. I don't know about you, Kendra, but Kendra and I enjoy talking with each other, but also to others about these important issues. So please subscribe to our podcast. Again, it's called Jobs in Work with Work for Change. And thanks, Kendra, for laying out what Work for Change is all about and your vision for it. I am just completely honored to be a part of it with you. I just want to say that it's like, you know, a dream come true to be working with you in this capacity. So I'm just really excited about what's to come. So me too. 
So our website again is work the number four change LLC dot com. We are on, you can find us on Instagram, Facebook, um, what is it? Twitter. Uh, Twitter. Twitter. Yep. <laughs> um, and of course, um, online. So, you know, follow us, like, subscribe so that we can be in touch and we can make the world of work better. <laughs>